A very good morning everyone. Now it's Saturday now, August the 19th, and it is 9am in the morning. And I'm looking down onto the promenade of Blackpool from the wedding chapel. It's, it's from here that I'd like to introduce my video. Oh, I'm just going to pan round and to show you this view here. You can see how windy it is with the sand particles all being blown along horizontally on the beach area. Can you see the sand moving? It's a fierce wind here, hence myself making the introduction inside. Thank you to all the viewers and all the businesses that keep this channel moving along. Thank you very much. Now the video coming along, there's lots in this, there really is, so I do hope you enjoy. So with a final view of the promenade and panning back to see all the sand particles moving along horizontally on this beach, I'm now going to start the video off for you, thanking you again for everything. A very good morning to everyone. Now today, a little treat for us, because we're going to visit Robin Ross in his studio. Now, as you can see, there's lots of chairs and tables about. Well, there is a course today and I'm going to hand you over to Robin himself oh, to explain right. the Hang course. We've got more people. Somebody else arriving? No? Right, come on then. I should have to do it. Gather round, folks. So this is um, block printing ink, which is dead cheap and dead easy to use. And what we're going to do, this is going to be our printing plate. We're going to make a plate to do our printing. So you start off putting some of this ink on. Um, but you don't want very much because as you spread it about with a small roller it gives you a lot of ink on there and you don't need a lot of it you've probably got a bit too much there as it is but you only need it to be a4 size because that's what we're doing so we'll see how we go when we mix it up so that's fairly That'll do us, that's quite nice. There's a little bit too much, but it, it will wear off. So you always turn your roller the other way up. If you turn it that way down, you get ink everywhere. So we then lay on here our plants. So we're making a printing plate. And what these are, are just leaves you can get anywhere. These came from Stanley Park, just up the road. Hopefully, we'll get a nice image. Slightly bigger than we need, but we'll see. So then you put a piece of paper on top, and all we're doing is putting our plants into the ink. Now you don't need a roller to do this, you can just use your hand to do it. But if you do that enough, It's actually a piece of scrap, we don't need that. What we need is these. So these now will peel off. They've got ink underneath. That will peel off. It's done two things. It's put ink on these and it's left the printing plate there. So you can see an image there that we can print from. You turn these ink up. They've got ink on them, so they have now got ink on those, ink on there, ink on there. So we then get this paper, hopefully it will work, because we've created a printing plate just using ink and plants. So we're starting to get our print because we've created a printing plate. That's exactly what we've done. And now what we can also do is get this paper. 
and these have now got ink on them on the back of them so we can then turn those over and use those to create more images so you're actually using the leaves you created earlier to make images and we'll see what we get so again we put that over there roll that down peel that off we take these off one of painting with plants and flowers so it's not difficult to do but it's a nice effective way to use raw materials uh, you can actually use anything um, and you can do the composition yourself you can use different colored inks I've used black on these um, and I'll just show you this when you put it in a frame it's a whole new ball game. I must tell you while I was videoing this Anna's turned up from T Amantis. Good morning, Anna. Good morning. Paul. Good morning. And you're here for the course as well? Yes, of course. Oh, that's lovely. It changes. Automatically changes. The minute you put a mount around it and put a frame around it, it suddenly becomes a piece of art. And you can use the paper I use is called sugar paper, which has got different colours. We've got different colours to play with. Um, and you can just composition those whatever you want. They're called monoprints because each one is different. You don't repeat them. And you can't. It's impossible. You can use the same leaves and the same materials, but it turns out as a monoprint, uh, and they work really good. Um, it's great for schools, because you send the children around the playground, they come back with a load of leaves and plants and foliage. As you can see, I was in Stanley Park yesterday and got all that lot. Um, and you can usually work any plant or tree to do it with, and it works really, really well. It's fun. Um, you can also use scratch marks on it as well, but we'll just do plants and flowers in a moment, and then I'll show you a few tricks later. That's your lot. Thank you, Colin. You're a wonderful man. Dodgy raincoat, dodgy cap, nice shirt, but a marvellous man. Thank you very much, Robin. Now, thank you for your time, because I can see now all the other students are arriving. So I'm going to thank you again. And Anna, ever so good to see you. I know that you're going to enjoy this course. And as said, I must leave now, Robin, to greet all his students. Thank you very much, Robin. Thank you, Colin. To finish, I'm just going to show you where Robin's studio is. Look, that's the Abingdon Barbecue there in Abingdon Street. And I'm down this little alleyway here, which was once known as the Rock Factory. Now, Robin's studio, where we've just come from, is here. There we are, that take, those stairs will take you upstairs to see Robin himself in his studio. I do hope you've enjoyed this little presentation this morning on the Tuesday. Now we are just one street up from Abingdon Street and the studio of Robin. We are now in Topping Street and look, there's the big store of Iceland there. Now I'm going to show you this here. As one and all know now, this is one very big interesting project for a build of the Works and Pensions Office. Now from here, I'm going to show you the progress of this steel structure here against the finished part of the staircase and the lift shaft. There we are, look at this. Look at this steel framework here. And as we go around, as we approach these gates now that we know so well, we can look down at that other structure there. And that has now reached the same height as the one in the middle of the staircase and the lift shaft. 
Now what I've done is I've just walked around the corner to another viewing area into the build of this works and pensions office and we can see the companies involved in this construction and from these gates I can show you these views here and I do hope you can gauge the height of these structures to the right to show you where we are that's the giant car park of Talbot Road that structure there and turning back we can see the giant arm now extended on this mobile crane and another look again at these structures which are now appearing at this build so I do hope you've enjoyed this visit to the Works and Pensions Office, a two year plus project. Now virtually just around the corner from that build, we are now at another build, and that is of the Holiday Inn. Now, all the emphasis now, when we come around to this build, will be on the outside, mainly the good progress being made for the pavement area and all the bus stops. There we are, across the road now, you can see all these contractors hard at work laying paving blocks. Yes, this area to be completed, I believe, all with a paving blocks. So there we are, we've had a very, very interesting morning. Robin, the builder of the Works and Pensions Office, and seeing all these contractors here, hard at work, preparing this pavement area and the area for the bus stops to return. A very good morning to everyone. It is Wednesday now, August the 16th and I'm ever so pleased because it is already one cracking morning. The sun is out and we have promised this for the next couple of days. So here we are. We are now approaching Water's Edge. Just got to go down the last couple of steps and we will find ourselves right at Water's Edge. There's the North Pier there. Turning the camera around very slowly so as you can see very very gentle ripples of this Irish sea. There's the central pier there with the big wheel. Just this is just to start my video off for this Wednesday. A view at Walter's Edge of the Irish Sea. I'm still at this build now of the Wilco store and cinema complex and I'm, I've just found this gap here and I'm hoping you can see the progress, the huge progress of the placing of those paving blocks. Can you see it just by that mixer there? Yes, they've covered a lot of ground. So again, this completes our visit today to this build of the Wilco store and the cinema complex. Yes, we have moved on and now we are down Topping Street. This is what I would like to show you. It's our old haunt of the cask and tap. And as you know, last week we saw contractors here replacing this shop front. And here we are, this is the shop front, three quarters finished. What remains is the fitting of this fascia sign because they've got to make it flush and as you can see if you look up it is protruding so just a just a little job to be done there and also here 
all these bricks to be scraped and wiped down to make sure that they look like their original features and this side as well so the most important thing I want to tell you is that yes the shop front is in and it looks magnificent but the most important thing is the cask and tap is now open full time and will be in the future while these little jobs are undertaken so please come inside and see the cask and tap which as said is now fully open a very good morning everyone now today we're going to return to the build of the Wilco store and the cinema complex because it is a lot quieter here this morning I'm going to show you what's going on and the wonderful wonderful progress that has been made I'd like you to see the paving blocks that have been placed can you see them and in front another area with rebars showing and concrete will be poured over those over these rebars and then of course the paving blocks will be placed over that moving on down here I do hope you can gauge what has happened here look marvellous marvellous progress just moving a couple of paces away from our principal viewing area I'm just going to run you along here to show you all the bags of sand and all the paving blocks still to be placed they're all being they've all been kept nice and safe here and I can confirm with you that all the necessary groundwork at the front here has all been completed so that completes another visit this week to this very very impressive build of the cinema complex and the Wilco store we will see one and all next week now our next call is down Talbot Road in the background there there's the giant store of Sainsbury's just to show you where we are and yes I do hope you remember that last week I showed you this new fascia sign down Talbot Road for this shop that will be open in the near future look the ice cream parlor there over there sweet treatment well this morning I'm going to show you another new fascia sign just virtually two or three doors along and over there you will see that black fascia sign with the white lettering it's going to be a mini shop selling drinks cigarettes and vapes they are very close to opening so there we are that's progress now down Talbot Road and also I can tell you that there's another two shops all undergoing heavy renovation inside so that's to bring you right up to date down Talbot Road with these two new fascia signs for the businesses the sweet treatment ice cream parlor and this new mini shop not far short of opening a very good morning everyone it is Friday now August the 18th and it is just past 11 o'clock in the morning and I'm going to take the opportunity now of our usual visit to the Holiday Inn with emphasis all on the pavement area here that is being laid and made have a look at this marvellous progress with the paving blocks here and the other side of that little wall where the scaffolding is you can see 
good progress being made on the car park. I'm going to take you further along so as you can experience this view of the new pavement area which will also contain all the bus stops. Now I've just moved along but unfortunately I cannot bring you any views from this angle to where we have just left but I'm going to show you this you see they've started preparing this area here for the laying of those paving blocks and moving on up here you can see this area here well in advance now to receive those paving blocks as well just moving a few paces along and we find ourselves looking at the giant store of Sainsbury's and moving the camera around nice and slowly I could show you this area here where as you can see it's all been laid a flat it's all a flat surface here yes quite a lot to be done but it will be done and it will look very nice after so I'm going to see what I can find now at the underpass area. Here we are. Now in front is the entrance and exit to Blackpool North Railway Station. And I'm going to turn the camera around nice and slowly because I would like to show you this. Now, this is the underpass. And as you can see, as you can see, wonderful, wonderful progress all being made here. Yes, coming along really very, very well indeed, without a shadow of a doubt. So there we are, you're up to date now with the progress of the pavement area and the very important part of the work of the underpass. We are around the other side now with a view of this facade here showing the Holiday Inn littering and the motive and over there we can see the facing bricks there this will complete our visit today to the build, again stressing it's all about now the progress of the pavement area and the underpass. Here we are on this Friday afternoon, we're at the back of Blackpool Tower. Look, there's Blackpool Tower and there's what would be the entrance just down there with the blue signs. Now, why I brought you down here today is this. Now, as you know, this was the old Kentucky fried chicken shop. And now it is known as the Greedy Pig under entirely new management. And they're very, very close to opening. And I thought you might be interested to see this because yes, they are seeking staff. So there we are, there's the poster there the greedy pig very very close to opening and this sign which says staff are wanted a very good morning to everyone it is saturday now the 19th of august now we're at the back of the sands venue resort hotel we haven't been here for a long, long time because there's nothing been happening. Now, what I can do today is to pass on very interesting and pleasing information about Showtown. That's the museum that is scheduled to open now. Yes, I can tell you, Showtown opens up the middle of March next year 2024. Now the hotel part is nowhere near ready to open. 
You could forget that for many, many years. I'm pretty sure of that now. So, just to confirm that the Showtown part of this, of this build opens up middle of March next year, 2024. So with a final view of the placard board over there showing Showtown, this completes our visit here today. Now, with this view of this very well-known street trader who is in, it's who into to the name of Crazy Steve. England ladies t-shirts here for the game on the Sunday morning. This is where I would like to thank one and all who has watched this video this week. So again, have a look at the tops here for the England ladies. Okay, you're welcome. And Put me on the thank you card, ever please. so much for viewing the video. And welcome I will see you all next time. Bye-bye now.